Good morning all, hope you're keeping safe and, safe and well. Today I just want to run through a little presentation I put together um, for a vehicle I looked at that was set in the P0016 camshaft alignment DTC um, that I diagnosed using Picoscope and the MAF channel. Uh, a little bit about the vehicle history, it originally came in with a noisy timing chain. The technician replaced the timing chain uh, with guides and the oil pump. Um, upon rebuilding, the vehicle failed to start and was set in the P0016 code. The timing was then rechecked um, once with the aftermarket tool and then again with the manufacturing tool, confirming the timing chain was timed up correctly. The technician then replaced both the camera crank sensors and the pulley on the camshaft, uh, believing they were sending an, the incorrect signal um, with no change. The timing was then rechecked by a metal technician, uh, it's a Renault engine, and confirmed the timing chain was timed up correctly. These uh, pictures I was sent showing that the camshaft and crank camshaft were locked in the correct positions, showing that the timing chain was timed up correctly. So, uh, connect up scan tool, confirmed the DTC um, was there, cleared it, tried to restart the vehicle, and the P0016 DTC came back act active straight away. So, with the scan tool connected, I, I, um, whenever I have a diesel that doesn't start, I have a, a rule, um, of 300, where I look for 300 RPM, 300 bar fuel pressure, and 300 airflow. Um, I class this as the basic information the diesel and engine ECU will need before it will operate the fuel injectors. Um, so if I ever have a diesel that doesn't start, I, I look at these data and then I base my diagnosis on whichever one um, isn't reading correctly. And you can see here, I've got 300 bar fuel pressure. My target is 292. Um, I've got 275. RPM um, and 240 airflow. So this is close enough to my friend of all um, that this vehicle sh should start um, and the engine ECU should operate the fuel injector. Um, sure enough, to connect up to cam, 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 and crank, to cam and crank sensors, I always use a long, long time scale because we, we can then zoom in um, and it's good to see repetition um, of both sensors. You can see I've got a nice repetition of the um, cam sensor and the crank sensor. And you can see um, the, the green is, in, is my fuel injector. You can see the fuel injector is being um, operated. So that confirms the engine ECU is seeing everything it needs to, to operate that fuel injector. And you can see it lines up correctly with the camshaft. Um, and we've got good, nice repetition. So I needed to compare. Um, that signal to a good good vehicle. Luckily enough, they did have a good vehicle, but it was a customer's vehicle um, and the customer was on his way to collect it. Um, so I wasn't allowed to disable the vehicle in any way, um, but you don't need to. So this is, this is this, I literally just back broke the camera crank sensor and, and captured this data. Um, and you can see camshaft sensor, the camshaft sensor looks very similar. Um, so now you've got you, you, you know good and I can then zoom in and I can compare the signals with, um, on, from both vehicles. Uh, put the phase rulers on, I can then calculate um, the rotation difference between the two. Um, so I've lined them up with the same positions on the cam crank sensors. Um, and you can see I've got a rotation of 94 degrees um, on my good vehicle and my problem vehicle, I've got 54. So I've got about a 40 degrees difference between the two. Um, so based on this, you would normally go back in. Um, it gives you grounds to, to recheck the, the timing. But let's look at the vehicle history. It's already had the timing checked multiple times with multiple technicians and multiple tools. Um, it is quite con time consuming to recheck the timing on this vehicle. Uh, you've got to pull uh, all the front cover and so forth. And Picoscope is all about non-intrusive diagnostics. So there must be something more we can do. Uh, and believe it or not, we have got all the data that we need. All we need to do is add a math channel um, to this crankshaft sensor to diagnose this vehicle. So for, uh, for those of you not so used to, to the math channel, um, this is, is just a, a math calculation uh, based on the speed of the crankshaft. Um, and from this, you can do um, a running compression test and a cylinder balance test. Um, for the compression side of it, you can see 
how the, you can measure the slowest speed of the crankshaft um, as it's as the engine comes up with compression, uh, the engine speed slows down. Um, you can, and you can see from this, we've got nice, even, um, slowest engine speed. Uh, so from this, you can calculate that um, if compressions of all cylinders are, are, are equal. Um, likewise, the balance test that we can see as the injector fires here at TDC, uh, at TDC we, can, we can see that the rate of, of the um, the crankshaft speed increases, um, uh, and then 180 on, we can see the CIN3 would, would fire, so, and, and, so, um, and so forth. Um, and we can see these are all the, the maximum engine speed as each injector fires are very similar. So this shows the power output for each cylinder is about the same. So I just want to run through what, what a, a, a misfire looks like. Uh, so this was the same same vehicle. I just dis disconnected uh, injector three. So you can see as injector one one fires, we can see a nice increase in engine RPM, um, and then it slows down. And it comes up in compression. Um, but as cylinder three fires, you can you can see hardly any increase in engine RPM, um, confirming that uh, the power output from cylinder three is not there. Uh, but then it's in the four and the two fires, you can see the engine speed is then slowly increasing each time, um, determining the out power output from each of, of the other cylinders is, is equal. Um, you can also see the injector does fire at TDC. So um, whenever we're doing a relative compression test, we normally line up the um, because we, we have to disable um, the fuel, we normally don't get injections, uh, in the injector to operate. So what we normally do is we uh, line up when um, the injector fires with the camshaft, and we then use the camshaft position to identify which cylinder is, is given our, our low compression using the firing order. So let's go back to our pumping vehicle. And straight away, you can see um, and the math channel, we can see where TDC is. Um, so we can see the slowest point for, for each cylinder is all equal. So our compressions are all, all equal. But you, you can also notice that the injector isn't firing at TDC. So we've used the phase rulers again and then calculated the, the when the injector fires, and we actually have got it's firing 45 degrees before TDC. But what you can also see is where TDC is in relation to the camshaft. Uh, so let's compare this to our, our known good. And you can see TDC is, is, is in exactly the same position on the camshaft. So we switch between the two, just in case you didn't see. The injector is firing quite early on in, in this, this camshaft position, position, but TDC is just after the midway point, and the same here, it's just after the midway point. So based on this, we can say T, the camshaft and crankshaft are timed up exactly the same as um, on, on both vehicles. So this confirms that it's actually the um, sensor on the, on the flywheel that is out. Um, so moving on to showing, just showing you the flywheel, you can see this is where the, the pickup is for the TDC sensor. Um, and what, what actually happened was you've got a lo location pin here. And we have to, when you refit the flywheel, you have to line that up. And what had happened, it, it, this hadn't been lined up and it was one tooth round, which is actually 45, five degrees. Um, so what we did, we removed the, removed the gearbox, moved the, the flywheel around one turn, um, rebuilt the vehicle and it fixed the concern. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, any comments, please, please share um, and thank you for watching.